Good morning, everyone. We'll get going here with our first module, which is um, continuing the welcome and an overview here as we dig in a bit into all the soil invertebrates and their connection with soil health. Uh, thank you again, Liz, for leading things off today and moderating. I am Stephanie Frischi, agronomist and plant ecologist with the Xerces Society. In my role, I provide habitat expertise and support for projects in Canada, the US and Latin America. And I also work with the native seed industry and researchers to plan and develop seed supply of important plant species for restoration of pollinator and other beneficial insect habitat. Today, I'm joined by two other co-presenters, Jennifer Hopwood and Barry Fisher. And to introduce them, Jennifer is a senior conservation entomologist with Xerces and provides resources and training for pollinator and beneficial insect habitat management and restoration in a variety of landscapes. She oversees a team of four USDA natural resource conservation partner biologists and works closely with the NRCS. She's authored a number of publications and articles and is co-author of several books, including Farming with Native Beneficial Insects, 100 Plants to Feed the Bees, and a Roadside Revegetation Manual. And Jennifer holds a master's degree in entomology from the University of Kansas. And Barry, Barry Fisher recently retired as Central Region Leader with the Soil Health Division of the USDA NRCS that's Natural Resource Conservation Service. And he serves on the Midwest Cover Crops Council. He's a certified uh, crop advisor and a 38 year member of the Soil and Water Conservation Society. Barry and his wife, Michael, operate a cash grain and livestock farm in West Central Indiana. He has a bachelor's of science in agriculture from Western Kentucky University. And since his retirement, Barry has launched Fisher Soil Health, LLC, where he does consulting on soil health and regenerative farming. And now just to, to repeat what Liz already said, for those of you who may still be joining, just a few tools and reminders. There's a link in the chat that will take you to an e-packet of resources that are companion references and websites for today's course. You can go ahead and open that. Um, and, and browse some of those links and resources. And if you're having any, any trouble, let us know using the Q&A. Also, as Liz mentioned, today's course is being closed captioned. So if you want to see the audio printed across the bottom, there's a couple of settings that you need to choose to turn that on in Zoom. And if you need help getting that started, um, let us know in the Q&A also, and we'll post those directions again. We are recording this today and we will post a trimmed and edited version in the future and we'll send you the link to that um, in a few days. And then one of the link in, in that e-packet of resources are for some shorter webinar versions of this material that are just an hour each. So you can also take a look at those if you want to review or rewatch um, before or in addition to this longer version that we're doing today. This is just an outline and a schedule for how we'll move through the topics this morning. This same outline is available in that e-packet of resources on the second page. So if you wanna to check that at any time, that's where you can find that information. We're gonna cover the basics of soil and soil invertebrates. Then Jennifer will lead us in a deeper dive about soil invertebrates just over an hour's amount of time going through profiles about how to recognize each group where they live and what they do. Um, we'll have a 20 minute break from 1040 to 11. And then um, as people are, are coming back to the Zoom, we'll rejoin with a short quiz. And then in the remaining modules, we'll talk about scouting and monitoring, how you can find these soil animals. And then we'll cover topics like management practices and the effect that they have on soil life, including some NRCS programs or practices. 
that can provide some financial support for implementing um, practices that support soil life. Then in module six from 1140 to 1220, Barry will be doing a, a deeper dive into soil health management as a system uh, with some, some case studies as examples. And then we'll wrap things up by going over some resources. And we have an open period of, of Q&A uh, scheduled for the end. And then again, at the very end, when you exit the Zoom, an evaluation will pop up for you to complete, please. And we know that four hours is a long time to attend something virtually. So we have built in a few instances throughout this morning where we're going to ask you to provide some input and to be a little bit interactive with us here. And we're actually going to go to one of those times right now when we'd like to hear from you. So Liz is going to open a poll here. And to get a sense of who's in the audience, please select which of the following categories best fits your role or interest in soil invertebrate conservation. So you can use that window that has popped up as the poll and then select and submit your response, please. All right, just a few more seconds here and then we'll show the results. Okay, great. So this has got the, the results uh, displayed there. Looks like there's a wide range of folks, the majority are NRCS conservation planners at 58%, and another 11% are um, science and technology support within NRCS, another 11% are farmers of crops or livestock, and then we also have some interested community members, cooperative extension, master gardeners, and uh, crop consultants and biologists, so a, a good diversity and cross-section here of folks. Okay, thank you for the poll, Liz. I'll just give a, a bit of background then about the Xerces Society. It's an international conservation organization focused on invertebrates and their habitats. We were formed in 1971 by Dr. Robert Michael Pyle as initially as an organization of butterfly scientists. We are named for the butterfly that's pictured here, the now extinct Xerces blue butterfly, which was the first butterfly to be lost to extinction in the US due to human activity, which was loss of its habitat. And so Xerces was really founded with a goal to prevent the extinction of other butterfly species in the future. In the 50 years since our founding, we have grown to focus on many more invertebrate conservation topics, including and in addition to butterfly conservation. We have around 50 staff in about a dozen states across the US. And we work across several program areas, a pesticide team who help us understand and apply research in order to reduce the use and the detrimental effects of pesticides on invertebrates and on our ecosystems and environment. Our pollinator team is the largest pollinator conservation team in the world, and we focus on uh, pollinator conservation through the creation and management of habitat and through promoting agricultural biodiversity. This includes soil and both Jennifer and I and Liz here today with Xerces are part of the pollinator team. Xerces also has staff focused on endangered species such as certain bumblebee, butterfly um, species, fireflies, also some freshwater mussel species. And then we have programs in communications and community. Um, this includes all of our publications, our YouTube channel, our social media, other outreach, our ambassadors program, and the Bee City USA program, where towns, cities, or campuses pledge to be uh, pollinator friendly 
and make more suitable habitat and education about pollinators in their communities. And for all of our work, we use uh, restoration, research, education, outreach, and advocacy to further our conservation mission. Getting back to the topic at hand, I just want to also share and explain that the publication pictured here, this cover, is available to view or download from Xerces Publications Library. It's also linked to in that e-packet of resources. This is over 130 pages with 266 images, and it goes into much more detail on the topics that we'll be talking about in today's course. So we're really excited to share this publication and hope that you'll find it to be um, a really good supportive resource for your work as well. And also I'd like to acknowledge and thank our grant funders. We could not do this work without their support. And this particular program and project and course has been funded by Organic Valley and a grant from Northeast Sayre, which is the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education. So thank you to those funders.